here. I'm Leslie. I'm a trustee of Haram for Kenya and my husband Roger and I founded the charity in the first place because we noticed all these children on the streets in Kenya and we asked them how we could help and they asked us to help the boys because often they're rejected by so many people for various reasons and they were the main children that were actually living and sleeping on the streets absolutely destitute um, either from lack of food at home no parents or just that they had found difficulties at home because maybe they'd been naughty and been beaten quite badly which we don't agree with but we have to respect other people's cultures are different to ours so we inv were involved with helping street boys and we've built two safe houses in Kenya many of you will know us because you've met us at Gilwell before and have understood what the story is but bear with me because many people haven't met us before so what we do when we come to Gilwell is that we obviously try to raise some funds and awareness because the scouts can get involved and as it turns out all of our boys are now scouts in Kenya which is fantastic so we're all one big family now worldwide what we actually do in Gilwell is that we sell things that we buy and we also teach you how to make things which you can do with your scouts, cubs, beavers, explorers, sass, everybody actually. We've even done it with little children as young as five so everybody can do it to their own standard but the fun is there to be done and it also can help you by doing a little bit of fundraising towards your fundraising badge and I know this is for certain sections however there's no reason why little ones can't get involved with as well so the younger end of the scouting family could be involved in this we have nearly 80 boys that we look after in Kenya so it is quite difficult especially at the moment with fundraising and things like this but we're fortunate that we have a lot of people that support regularly so it's helping us to keep them fed and looked after especially in this time of covid where they are struggling too because they don't have the same facilities that we have but we're not going to dwell on the negatives we're going to look at the positives because we want you to be challenged a to have fun and at the same time help us now this isn't going to be as expensive as you think, honestly it isn't, because what we have are some things that you can make and do and have fun that we can post out to you. I have instruction sheets to show you how to do it, but today as a special treat I'm going to show you roughly how you do it. So I'm going to do it in phases so that you can understand and look at the video, keep the video, look at it and then the instruction sheets will make sense. It's not difficult, honestly, and it doesn't matter if you're artistic or if you're not. Everybody can achieve, and I mean that seriously. Everybody does achieve. And everybody, so far, we're thrilled, has been absolutely thrilled with what they've managed to do and didn't believe that they could do it. So in just a minute, I'm going to show you what to do. But at first I'd just like you to watch a short video which is one of our boys telling you what it means to them to actually be looked out for, looked after, loved, whatever you want to call it, but to have a family from across the world that is willing to be interested in their stories and to help them. Thank you. I want to say that I want to say that people who are lingering, I would like you to sponsor, the, to sponsor the boys because many of them are homeless, they don't have their parents and they are in the streets. Many of them dying there, other people pick them up. We try to get them out of the street and to get and to bring them here to stay and to get the education 
in future they will have a job and they will never forget them they will they will they will remember that i was an street boy and some buddy from uk came and rescued me and gave me hope and gave me life so he got something to do in 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 their lives and he won't be forget them okay so now you've met one of our boys uh, they're all just as adorable and all so grateful for the help you're giving and other people are giving so what are you going to do well i've got a little pile of things here what you're going to do is you can make a woggle ooh, upside down a woggle or you could decorate a coaster which is stained and it has stamps on it which is ideal or we also have trinket boxes which are prepared um, for you to be able to stain they're different prices and we have a price sheet so it's easier if I do it for that uh, with that when I send it to you but to give you an idea these woggles are £1.20 and from that the profit that we make which every penny goes back to Kenya we're all volunteers here everything that goes back to Kenya will actually feed the profit on this will feed a boy for a couple of days so you can see it is very valuable so one pound 20 may not seem a lot to us but out there the profit on that is colossal for us to help these children now there's lots of things that you need, but let me show you. This is what soapstone looks like when it comes out of the ground. It's quite hard, but, and if I dropped it, it would crack. But it, it forms in layers sometimes, but it's actually very soft and chalky. So when you work with it, either rubbing it with sandpaper or using an, a knife, you, you actually scrape the layers off and it's like snow. So you'll hear me refer to snow and sludge because that's the way it works. Yes, we do get in a mess, but it's all washable. So what we use is, the, we, oh by the way, the coasters that we've got are all plain and prepared, ready for you to just stain. They've been smooth, but they haven't been polished, so you can use them quite comfortably. So there's various other pieces of kit you will need. Now I'm just gonna quickly go through it, but the, on the list it shows you what you need. You need baby wipes because from those you're going to use your Chinese takeaway dishes and you're going to create stamp pads where you, the most expensive thing to buy are these ink pads, they're, they're stain ones, so they're, um, these are the distress inks but what you need is something that's a dye base because then it will stay on and there's different colours that you can get but once you've got that because you're using a pipette this can last for ages and you can use it for other crafts as well so this using this as a, as, as a stamp pad really does save money because stamp pads can be quite expensive but you do need a black stamp pad these are around about five pounds each but you only really need one these are permanent pet ink pads as well that is for when you come to do your decoration you may need that you will also need some sharpies now this is an outlay but if you keep them safe for purposes that you need them for then it will they will last ages some of mine lasted four years because I was using them at lots of different venues and we do actually go out to scout groups and we will actually do this within a meeting if you want or at a special camp so if you want us to come and do things with your any camps that you're doing once we get back to normal whatever normal is going to be um, then we can come and do that um, you need the ones which have got a thin end and the thicker end because the thin end is very good for the young people to do their writing because they sometimes want to put a message on them like love mum or just put their names on that's fine put that down there you will also need rubber stamps now these rubber stamps um, that's you could see that's a fleur de lis um, we've also got all sorts of others there's penguin here penguins hopefully you can see that in the daylight um, but they're clear stamps and what you then you put them onto anything I've got clear 
stamp pads um, but you could even put them onto the back of, of the stamp thing and put stick them on there so you can stamp them onto the soapstone but anything that's firm will do that nicely now then you can see that's the old fleur-de-lis as we're talking scouts as a scout I just wanted to show you that we do actually have the new logo we have been given permission by the scout shops and scout association to actually make these rubber stamp logos now I know the new logo isn't for everybody but it is that's it we've got it now so if you want the new logos we can actually sell them to you we can make them and sell them to you um, you just email us with the prices but they're not expensive the top one is is around I can't remember exactly but it's around about four pounds and the bottom the smaller one is is about two pound fifty so if you want one give me a shout with the we've been given license to do this um, the other thing is for the little ones and even the cubs and scouts come to hand, it doesn't really matter but particularly beavers um, you can buy sharpies of different colours um, as you can see um, it, it's good to get some of those if you can because just for this it goes on because they're permanent markers of course so the colour will go on and stay on and what I do say to the children is if they're doing something and they want to draw their own design use a pencil very lightly first before they put the pen on because once that's on you can rub it back but it's never quite the same you will get instructions with both ones for the woggles and the coasters and in them you have all the information of what I've just shown you on what you actually need now one other thing that you're going to need um, you can do these two ways we're going to start with the woggles which start roughly like this and what we do need is a craft knife now I know they're dangerous but I will be honest with you truly honest with you um, that we have maybe had one small cut with one particular young person who decided that he wasn't going to listen and the leaders have been very good when we've done it they kept an eye on them and we haven't had any other cuts and we have done thousands of these woggles I mean our second uh, another big order we've got was four and a half thousand we brought in from Kenya we're the only place you can get them because we've actually um, commissioned them um, but <laughs> I think we've got about three and a half thousand three thousand left maybe two three and a half, three thousand left roughly but we have done thousands of them over the years and we haven't had any real damage the other thing is when I show you I'll be showing it is different and opposite to what scouts teach purely because this is very very soft there are no knots in it I'll go into detail with that later you also need wet and dry now wet and dry there's five different levels 120 180 240 320 400 you won't remember that but it's in the it's in the paperwork and uh, we have started with 80 for the youngsters but it is quite coarse so we've decided to change it to 120 and this helps to smooth it down so the reason we use the craft knife with the older young people is because we want them to appreciate the work that's involved when people are making these things in Kenya because it is quite a skill and an art form that a lot of people do not appreciate but you can always just start with the wet and dry for the benefit of the smaller people the other thing we need is clear polish this is beeswax polish but you make sure it has to be beeswax but you make sure it doesn't actually have turpentine in it because some do and it actually then strips the work you've done and makes an absolute mess so the other thing if you don't have furniture polish to use that's beeswax clear boot polish that does it kiwi um, not advertising there probably are other makes but in Kenya actually most of them do use the smaller um, com um, people that work on their own they actually use boot polish because that's all they can afford and it goes a long long way lastly I think it's lastly but we'll soon catch up as we work through it and you'll see if there's anything different you need some sizal now this is just sizal string and part of the fun especially if you're going to do this at a camp the first night you can have them stripping the sizal so you as adults probably know how to do it you just do that pull it apart so you put it into the three parts 
Once you've got it into the three parts, you'd start to pull it apart here, like this. So you end up with fluffiness, I call it. Now then, what you do is you get it as fluffy as you can all the way down that piece of string that you, you've just stripped, and then drop it on the floor. And then it turns into a little clump, and you pull it out in little clumps, because this is what they use in Kenya to put on the polish and to buff it up. And it is fantastic, it really works. In fact, we use this now to buff up quite a lot of our polishing, as it were, our um, china and things like that, because it doesn't scratch it, uh, it's soft, and it really does the business. Right, I'm going to take my neckerchief off because I don't want to get that in a mess. But now is the next bit. Now, I'm going to do this in very short stages, but you will see how it works. It gives you an idea that when you're following the instructions, you'll see exactly what I mean. Now, I always tell the Cub, Scout, uh, Cub Scouts, Explorers, whoever, um, Cubs sometimes do have a go at this if the leaders are content with having enough adults to watch them. If not, they can do it the same as the beavers and do it straight from the stage of the sandpaper but I'll do that a bit later because that's the next stage. So you have your woggle that's rough and they all look very similar when they're opened but actually once they get wet they do change in colour. Now the first thing that you need to do is you use the knife. I always explain to the scouts obviously we're to do that when we're whittling wood but this is very soft and so therefore we need to do it this way as if we're peeling a brand new potato not scraping peeling so you set it at about 45 degrees and then if you can see hopefully you'll be able to see or well if you start doing it you will see there's snow coming off what you're trying to do is you're trying to get these ridges down to the level of the other you're not trying to make it thinner don't try and make it thinner because it is stone and if you drop it it'll break and you don't want to make it thinner because it can also pop open and break once we get it in the water because soapstone sucks up water but then it dries out really hard so you just need to be careful one of the things is I teach the scouts and cubs and whoever I'm just going to call everybody scouts it's easier um, is to actually hold it like this do not put thumbs and fingers inside because that's when it starts to get a bit uh, softer with the water. That's when things break open. So if they practice this now, it's not so bad. So they can sit for quite a long time just scraping it down. If they're struggling, just let them do it to a certain extent to their level and then go on to sandpaper because we want them all to finish about the same time. Now you're doing down to that end, keeping your thumb out of the way. Then when you want to do that side, you go round there and you turn it round and you do it back the other way so that you get it even. Do not try and trim the edges at the moment, they're quite sharp. We will do that with the sandpaper later. So I'm going to get on with this and then I'm going to come back to you and show you the next stage. Now I usually give the scouts about 15 minutes to do that. Uh, it doesn't have to be perfect. I've done a couple of stills that Chris, who's going to put this up for us, will can put on to show you the slightly smooth side and the rough side because I'm leaving one side undone just for quickness to show you. You'll also see on the slightly smooth side there's a little brown area which is, is here. I know you can't see it from there but that is actually natural stone and you might find the odd pits in it. That's its natural stone because some places it's a little softer. It gives it character, it doesn't have to be completely smooth um, because otherwise you'll find the young people are going to gradually whittle it down and then they're going to have one side that's thin and not safe and the other side that's thick. So it makes it difficult. So what you now do is you take your first grade of 120 out of sandpaper and what you do, I've got a small bowl here, I use washing up bowls and I have five which I space round so that people have the sandpaper to do with that the wet and dry in that bowl so it's 120, 180, 240, 320 and 400 if you want you can miss out 320 or the 400 either one um, and just cut, I cut them into pieces about this big so that they've got enough for a hand now the same goes with holding it you hold it like this so what you do is you put it in the water and then I get them to stand back because otherwise they're all crowding around the bowl and then what you do is you hold it like this and then you rub it that way and the way I teach the beavers, and this is where you start with, with the beavers, okay, and the cubs if you want. So you can start with this way. You go that way. The reason you go that way is because if you go that way, you could create a dent. So what you do is you make sure it's wet, and this is where you get the sludge. 
so you've had the snow now you've got the sludge and what you're doing here is you're not trying to wear it down you're trying to smooth it out so we don't want them pressing too hard and I often get them to just try it on their hand if they can feel it scraping they're pushing too hard um, we don't cause any injuries I hasten to add but it helps them to understand then when they reach the 400 I'll quite often say if you were to do that on your face you wouldn't want to press it too hard and you've got to take care of this like that so it's all just teaching them really how to cope with it so you rub it down like this and then you gradually move round and you rub down the other side and you keep going round so I tell the young um, scouts to the like beavers to go one two three four five six seven eight nine ten then turn it and do the same all the way round and it's more even now when it comes to the sides I was saying to you wait until you reach the sandpaper stage so if you want to make this smooth and beveled what you do is you go one two three four turn it one two three four turn it one, two, three, four, turn it. One, two, three, four, turn it. Um, excuse me, but my neighbours just walked past and bless them. Um, so, and you can see, you may not see on there, but I'm going to show it for Chris as a still. The difference, it's quite smooth. And within that, just the four or five times you do it, it just smooths it over and makes it really nice. One word of warning nothing is done on the inside they used to scrape it out with a knife they now use a drill so it's fairly smooth nothing goes inside there no um, wet and dry nothing you leave it as it is and you don't put polish in at the end nothing goes in there because that's that's going to weaken it if you do now you don't need to spend long on this because this is only the first piece of sandpaper so I give them usually about five minutes and what you're just trying to do is you can see whether there's scratches in it or not and then just advise them not to press so hard on it. What I also do is the blind, what I call the blind test, is I don't look at it and I feel with my thumbs and I can feel whether there's any grit. You'll know what I mean once you start doing it because if you feel it where it hasn't been done, there's a grittiness about it and then it gradually gets smoother. Then you move them on to the next bowl, so they use the next one and they do a little bit of rubbing down um, to, to smooth it. What they're trying to do is to make it smooth. So as they go through the bowls, they make it shinier and shinier and smoother and smoother. Now it won't get a true lustre until you've finished when you put the wax on, but you're just really trying to get it as smooth as is possible. And the 400 or the 320, if you choose to use that one, they will get it really lovely and smooth enough to polish and look the part. So then what we do is once we've done that what we do is we might want to stamp our logo. So if you use a clear or anything that's hard to put a rubber stamp on it, the rubber stamp you are going to use or the young person maybe they want to um, draw on it that's fine. So then you put your rubber stamp on I won't do this one because this is still wet you do have to let them dry for at least two hours so quite often what we do if we're doing it at a pack meeting or scout meeting they will do everything up to the point of needing to stamp it or polish it one week and the following week they then do the stamping and the polishing and the finishing off please label them with um, uh, tie labels and actually keep them with you because we've had many that haven't returned or they've forgotten them or they've broken them um, so, and the disappointment is it's not nice to see so if you can hang on to them that's ideal we all know what these kids these young people are like um, all scout leaders have that have had that experience somewhere along the line so all you do is you you stamp it literally on obviously on the black I'm not doing it oh, for real whoops the daisy never mind that's that broken up in true scout form we'll let it dry out and we can use it again later so use the pad dropped it in the water total muppetry never mind uh, shows I'm not perfect just like everyone anyway you you stamp it down and then the way to put it on if they want to use it is you hold it one side and you go round the woggle with this don't move the woggle it's easier to go round with this and then you will get your stamp on it which that one just a little dull so then 
we finish that. So next week we come back or later in the camp, if you're doing it at a camp when you were allowed to do that, you now want to polish it. Once you've um, stamped it, the next is the next thing. Sorry, my mistake. You're stamping and then you're polishing straight afterwards, but let it dry because you, you'll smudge it. This this point, if you have turps in the um, polish, this is where it will rub it off, and that's not ideal. So what we do is you you shredded this your size off, so you've got it all ready as a buffer. In your polish, what you need to use is a small piece to actually be able to put the polish on. This one I prepared earlier. See, it goes quite manky after a while. You literally only need a tiny amount. And then what you're going to do is you're going to polish. Now this isn't dry, so it's not gonna come up, but you polish and you can see the color changes and you polish. Now you can go flat on the ends, but not on the inside and flat on the ends. Now they're slippery little slickers when they're like this. So they really should sit down and do this because you don't really want them dropping them on the floor. They only need a tiny bit of polish on and then they can just rub it in. They don't have to rub it in hard and fast. Um, it's just to get it coated and you can feel that it's coated when it's on. Now this, it's stained, the you can see the difference in the colour, but it's on and it's coated. Then you get your much larger than this scrunchy, I call it, and then you hold it again like this and you polish that way. Okay, so you're not going up and down and then when you do the bottom part you can polish it on your hand like this okay if you haven't got size all to do it or you haven't got the time or the energy to split it it is the best then use um, cut up some towels and use the soft toweling which will do the job but please try and put the put use a bit of size all or a, a paintbrush with the things with the um, brush cut down to put it on and actually as wet as this one is it is actually got a bit of a gleam in the sunlight and you can see it that is a standard polish that you do for everything then you will have your woggle if you've got two colored scarves or three colored scarves like mine is with the bands just reach down and get it with the bands up the side okay this is my Kenya scarf then it's going to hold fairly well. If it's a single colour scarf, the fabric can be quite thin. So I always suggest that firstly they keep these woggles for special occasions like St George's Day or something special where they're going out. But you put an elastic band on first and then put the woggle on so that it hooks onto the elastic band. For cubs who have their little coloured woggles, you can always put this on and then put the woggle on. If you do use the friendship knot, obviously you could put the woggle on first on either side or on both tie the friendship knot and it will stay there but I would suggest they use it only for best because when they go camping they always put things away so neat and tidy nothing's ever laying around the tent and they never tread on anything and that is what has happened before so I just like to protect these little people and bigger people from damaging something they've worked so hard to do. So now we're going to go back onto the um, staining of the coasters. Of course you could stain your woggle if you want so the process is the same for a woggle as it would be for a coaster. What we're going to do is make our stamping pad first. So you've got your Chinese takeaway, you've got three, usually three uh, wet wipes of sorts, whichever sorts you want. And then you get your colours. Now these are the distress inks that I said about and you've got a pipette. So what we do is, I'll do it this way and I hope you can see it, we just drop um, on like this in blobs. So you can see you don't use much um, and I usually do one per table, get the young people to sit in tables so that it's easier and um, I hope I've got some yellow in this one. No I haven't but it doesn't matter because I've got some red and we can use the red and I've got some green as well. I've got some more yellow indoors, but I'm not going to worry at the moment. And you can either dot it at different colours, or if you want to keep one colour one end and one colour the other end, that's fine. It doesn't look much at the moment, but you're going to see that it is actually going to improve. And some of it will be a bit splurgy brown, and some of it will be 
all sorts of colours. So, so we have our stamp pad and as you can see it's starting to spread. Now this is, as I say, ideal if you're doing stamping of anything of any sorts, okay, at any time. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use the Small Scout logo so I can show you how it works. So first and foremost, while that's sitting there doing itself, as it were, spreading itself around, I'm just going to get my coaster that hasn't been worked on, which is here somewhere. Here we go. And what we do to actually make our um, shading, for want of a better word, is we use these round cotton wool pads your makeup ones for you chaps that haven't got any you can always raid your wife so I'm sure they'd love you to do that but if not you can get them at the cheap shop one pound shops or any shop really you know where you can get them so what you do is you make it I always teach the kids make it to mushroom put it over the top and then scrunch it and then tap it down because that is your stamp pad right you're going to then dab into here anywhere you want it to be so you will get different colours on it can look a bit splurgy but it can look really effective now there's two main ways to do it is to do it into stripes like this so that it comes out in stripes and you try not to go over it too much but you might just need to fill a little bit because it is stone and there might be little dents in it and it might not take as well as you want so that's one way okay or I'll show you on the back you could stipple and do it like that Stippling is good and you can always leave some of the stone showing if you want. If you've got a really pretty pattern on the on one side you may not want to cover both sides with ink. And then the sides you can just run round if you wish or you can leave them plain like that. Now one thing I have found over the years that the younger the person the more prone they are to do the next thing. They see the stipple or they see this and they try and correct it. And so what they do is they try and correct it and then they go like this. Which on this one, because it dries so quickly, you can actually see some of the stippling on there, but generally it just goes into one big splurge. Then they get disappointed because it looks like one colour. But encourage them because it won't look so bad when it's polished. I personally like stripes because it just shows it all up beautifully. And as a, you can see from the other side, it dries really quickly, very quickly. That's from other things I've been doing, so don't worry about that. But they will get in a mess. And I always tell them that mums and dads have got a magic solution that will get that off. May take a couple of times, but it will get it off. It's called soap. Anyway, sorry, typical scout leader, corny jokes. So what we've got is our either our clear one I have actually got a fleur-de-lis as well a, a, the old badge style um, you can look online for this I just put in fleur-de-lis um, and it's a night media ink incorporated as it were um, from England but if you just put in fleur-de-lis uh, you'll probably be able to get one no problem at all so I'm actually going to use this one because it's slightly bigger oh no I won't I'll use that one so what we're going to do now, in fact, I'm going to be radical and I'm going to use the bigger version of the new Scout logo so you can see how they come out. So remember what I said about stamping on the pad, so you just literally stamp it a few times and you can see when it's completely covered. Now what you do is you take your stamp pad and you go like that hanging it a few times and you can see on it when you've got it covered. Now I always suggest that you actually help the youngest of the young people to do this because it's important they don't move it and I put it on a table so that it's easier to do. So what we do is it's on the table so you then press it down wherever they want it usually somewhere in the middle and then I get them to push down the top so that they are pushing it down and there you are it's as simple as that the main thing is don't put it on and then just wiggle it because sometimes when you're pushing it you wiggle it slightly and of course that's going to smudge it which is not very good now we just have to wait for that to dry for a few minutes 
and it doesn't take that long but some inks do take a little longer if it's a new ink pad. Right, it's taking a little while to dry, but sometimes because the ink is quite wet, um, I, what I use is just a tissue and I just gently dab it to take the excess off. And so now I've done that because it still looks shiny, but then that's sometimes the ink does do that. It's completely dry. So you can assist it, but just give it a chance to try and take and dry out on its own first. You don't have to wait for hours. Now that piece of sizal that I had, which was 75 centimetres long thereabouts, um, has been scrunched up now to this. This is why I say drop it on the floor because some of the pieces are long and some of them are much shorter and so therefore when you drop it on the floor and pick it up as one scrunchie you've got a nice little bundle. So what we're going to do now is show you how we do the polishing and this is where the magic starts and the kids absolutely love this um, especially the beavers they think it's wonderful. So you put on dab on your wax like that so I always dab it on the black because if you dab it on then you know it's gonna fix it and it's not gonna be smudging it anywhere so then you go like that hold it in your hands like this again it's a slippery little slicker and you don't want to lose it on the floor so then you come the back because there's nothing done if a young person's written on it or something like that dab it again I just like to make sure that the ink is well in before I start trying to smear it and rub it round now that's on now this is still that's a very wet piece of um, sizal so I need to uh, change that I think because it's quite wet you don't need to have it wet um, but you can see the color has changed it's slightly dark and then what you do is you hold it in your hand like this and you rub it so that it's not going to go anywhere again it's a good thing for them to sit down while they're doing this because if they do miss it will just go onto the table and not onto the floor and then do the other side and just turn it around gradually just pull out the scrunchie every so often and do it like this and then once they've done this bit then they could go onto a towel to find and shine it or if you've got an old t-shirt or a sweatshirt the inside of that where it's fluffy is a good good soft fabric to do so do cut them up if you've got a really old one and also when the young people get home if they just want to polish it up again they can do that with a t-shirt or a sweatshirt they're not going to wreck the sweatshirt and you can see the glitter the gleam on it it does start to shine quite nicely especially in the sunshine hopefully that's catching it on camera for you to see the shine that's coming up on it and it's as simple as that but it makes a lovely and lovely present but you could also do them as a fundraiser as well these are £1.50 each we do do discounts if people buy in bulk but what we're offering is with the woggles and these if you buy 25 you get five free okay because that way then you can get a few more as spares as well um, and some people make these ready for a when we do manage to do craft sales or fates again and just do a few and then you could sell them you could easily sell them for £2.50 each um, people would buy those but a lot of parents especially when beavers have done them because I love beavers but you know they never quite get it the finesse is not quite there sometimes but the parents are absolutely thrilled because there's not a lot they can do wrong with this and it's a really lovely activity and it's so smooth and therapeutic it calms them all down I've had a severely autistic child that as much as he would get up between stages and ping off the walls when he came to do it he would sit down and he would concentrate and he did it and he loved it so all children children with behavioral difficulties you do find when they're doing woggles and when they're doing these they just calm right the way down so at camp in the evening just before they're going to bed quite a good activity when we get back to normal and camping of course now I was thinking while I was preparing this that actually with all this business of zoom meetings and everything else like that um, you could do the woggles the carving of the woggles um, through the zoom thing if you wanted to and then explain to them just about polishing or writing their names on because the parents or the young people can get they've got boot polish it doesn't matter if you use brown either uh, in Kenya they quite often use brown because it shines up um, afterwards but um, and it's not staining it but they could 
find a permanent marker pen to draw on or write on. There are a lot of parents out there with craft supplies so the young people could decorate. You can even have a competition to see who can do the best one of these or um, because you could leave it plain and just do decoration. Decorate it yourself with your permanent marker coloured pens um, or with the woggle you could have a bit of a competition everybody gets the woggle anyway but just to see a vote to who's done the best why ever not and it keeps the interest there the other things we have are trinket boxes which are absolutely ideal especially with Christmas coming up these are all ready and are just the staining and that sort of thing so it may be that they could use again they could stain using these pens um, just by making shapes designs patterns and things if you're having to do it remotely um, but actually some of these things are not too bad to do when you've got your small group of young people outside if the weather holds up um, you could do it with them sitting with their two meter spacing and, and it's an, a different activity for them to do. But anyway, it's over to you, you can decide what you want to do. These, I believe, I was trying to remember, they're 225 I think. Now, if you want any of this stuff, we can post it to you. Obviously we do have to charge you postage, but we do tend to use my Hermes, which is the cheapest way of doing it. Um, just make sure that we've got at least um, a week to get it to you because it takes four to five days for it to come with Hermes. Um, all you need to do is email us and Chris will put, has put the email address below h4kinfo at gmail.com and ask for a price list and any other information you want. When we send it out to you we will send you out the information leaflets that we spoke of and all I can say is that we have do have scout groups that come back to us year after year oh, with different things that they want to do so once they might do woggles next time they might do coasters and then they rotate it every couple of years so that because all the young people love to do it again if you are not too far away from us we're in East Sussex we can come to you when we're allowed with all this Covid when things get back to normal and do a session with your young people um, when we get back to camping we can do the same then and with that we don't mind traveling a distance for that as long as we can bring our caravan because then we've got somewhere to sleep so what i'd like to do is say thank you very much for your patience with watching me muppetry and all with dropping the things in the bowl and different things and minor hiccups major hiccups as some would call it i really hope you enjoy it but please remember that if you do decide to take part and enjoy it, you are going to help the street children in Kenya that we care for and love dearly. And we really hope that you want to take us up on our offers and have a bit of fun. Thanks ever so much and hope to see you at Gilwell next year. Do come and find us. We will be in the international tent, I'm quite sure. Thanks a lot. Bye.